Hey guys, this is Matt from LastChanceTackle.com. Today I'm going to show you how to fish the super fluke. Very, very fun way to fish when you got schooling forage up in the bushes, up tight to cover with fish chasing them. Very, very fun way to fish. Hopefully we get a little bit of wind today. Um, it's been a bite, you know, that usually happens right around when the wind starts blowing. Hopefully we get a little bit of wind. Just like any other reaction bait, the wind is your friend. So without further ado, let's get to it. When you're fishing, you need to create an illusion. You want to make that thing look alive. I don't know if, about you guys, but when I look in the water, I see a bait fish, or I see a bluegill, I see a bass. They're not swimming straight all the time. They're darting left, they're darting right. They're trying to eat something, they're coming up, they're jumping out of the water, whatever. They're, they're moving around, um, erratic movements. So, being that we're fishing the super fluke, this bait basically exemplifies that whole thing. This thing is erratic. If fished the right way, you can make this thing do anything you possibly want. You can make it V-Wick. You can fish it on the fall. You can twitch it fast. You can twitch it slow. You can Carolina rig it. Um, you can Nico rig it. There's so many different techniques with this bait. Extremely versatile. And it creates its own illusion of realism. All you got to do is pop the rod tip and understand what your bait's doing. And this bait's freaking magic. It's money. So when it comes to fishing this bait, um, it's nothing too fancy. Nothing we're not used to doing. You throw this bait out there as far as you can. Um, it's very critical. You know what this bait's doing at all times. Um, and that has to do with line size, rod, reel, hook size, uh, whatever you're using off of a braid lead or whatever, fluoro. It's extremely important. It makes all the difference in the world. So I cast it just now. For those that you don't know what's going on, what would you think's going on? I mean, I'm throwing it out there. You think that bait's just sinking down? Or you think it's, you know, doing any movement? Um, some people will know, some people won't know. Well, what, bait, what that bait's doing right now is I threw that bait out there. Um, this isn't a real cast, I'm not really paying attention to it. But that bait's falling, and as this bait, partic as this bait falls, 90% of the time it'll fall in almost like a death spiral. It'll just come down just like that until I give it a twitch. When I give it a twitch, that bait will actually come up and flare one direction, return back into its spiral. So I know that on, if I know that on the fall, it's going to spiral down. On the twitch, it's going to flare. You can create some crazy action. I can sit here, pop, 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 pop. That bait's just doing this, and then it's going to spiral back down. Very effective when you're targeting, uh, you know, pods of fish that are packing on bluegill, packing on bass. Um, you can actually look as if it's injured, move it around, and stuff like that, and those fish will get, you know, you can make a fish trigger on it. Really, really cool. So basically a simple retrieve for fishing the fluke, and we're just going to be talking about just the weightless fluke in general. Um, all you're going to want to do, get that bait out there, just like that. I know my bait's spiraling down, we talked about that just now. So it's going to be spiraling. All of a sudden you're going to sit there and go, okay, I hit my target zone. You need to identify what that is, but that's, that's for you guys to decide. So you're going to identify your target zone, you're going to do a series of pops. Pop, 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 pop. And that's just making that bait flail around, and it's going to go into its death spiral right now. Very important you pay attention to your line. Extremely, extremely important. Uh, your line tells a story, and a lot of people just kind of go, okay, whatever, you know, I'm just going to fish, my line, whatever. Your line's telling you what's going on. If your line pops once, that's either it hits the bottom, or a fish picked it up. Your line starts taking off, good chances a fish picked it up. Um, sometimes if, you're, if your line goes slack, that'll tell you something's moving, your bait, moving the bait towards you. So it's very critical, like I was talking about my reel size, very critical that you be able to pick up line real fast and drive that hook home. So, but yeah, it's basically a series of pops. You want to create, like I said, I keep beating it into your guys' head. Create the illusion of realism. Make it look alive. So I know that I'm going to twitch it. Twitch, twitch, twitch. One, one, two, one, two, three. Simple way to do that, think of a song. Think of your favorite song and pop the rod tip to the words of your song. Uh, beats are going to be repetitious, but words are not. So you just, just as you're talking or whatever, or singing a song, just pop that rod to keep it moving alive. What that bait's doing is darting around. And every so often, stall it out, just kill it. The bait's going to start spiraling down. A lot of times that's when you get bit. So when it comes to line size and stuff like that, 
Um, you need to be, you need to really understand what type of line you're going to be using. Are you using braid? Are you using mono? Are you using flora? Well, fluorocarbon sinks. Monofilament slowly sinks, almost suspends, and braid floats. So by manipulating your line size, you guys will be able to to figure out, you know, how to, you know, approach a specific spot the most effective way. It, this whole sport's about controlling the uncontrollables, and in doing so, it comes down to all of our terminal gear. Um, you know, it comes down to your rod, your reel, your line, your bait, your hook, um, color, all that kind of stuff. How stealthy you are with the, the trolling motor, if, if, are your fish finders on. When it comes to line and stuff like that, I favor braid to a fluorocarbon leader. I'm extremely versatile with this. Um, I can feel the bite down deep with the braid. I mean, it's, it's, it has very little stretch, so I'm able to feel stuff. Uh, if I'm fishing shallow cover and I want to eliminate the whole line from sinking out, I'll throw braid, braid floats. But my fluorocarbon leader's there for the invisibility factor. If I'm throwing it on top of heavy cover, um, trees, um, thick, thick weeds, hydrilla, whatever, um, I love that braid to a leader right there. That braid slices. Now, there's times where you don't even need to use a leader. It could be straight braid all the way. Or there's times where you need to only use flora or even mono. Um, you have to let the fish tell you what they want, and a lot of people don't really do that. The fish are going to tell you what they want to eat, and all we have to do is listen. So I know how it is. You're going to walk into the tackle store. You're going to go to that hook wall, and you're going to see hooks for days. Um, then you're going to go to the plastic worm wall and try to pick out a bait for yourself, and you're going to see plastic worms for miles. It's going to go on forever. There's so many choices out there now, it's often hard for a regular person to, to pick out you know, the right setup and do it effectively. There's too many choices. So it's good, but at the same time, it can, it can really screw people up. So pretty much what we got going today is we're fishing the fluke. Um, say you walk in the tackle store after watching this video, you want to buy a super fluke. You want to get into this way of fishing, which is a blast. Um, you're going to go to the wall and you're going to see different styles of flukes. You're going to see some smaller stuff by some offshoot companies or some hand pour kind of guys. Then you're going to have more of the traditional stuff, the zoom stuff. You're going to have see jackal baits. You're going to see bass assassin, all that kind of, you know, tried and true staple baits. Um, the biggest thing you want to think about, especially when you want to pick, you know, the baits for your area, is identify the forage. Figure out what the fish are chewing on. If they're eating bluegill, don't throw an 8-inch bait. Or if they're eating, you know, silver sides, don't throw an 8-inch bait if, if you want to target those specific fish. Um, match the hatch. Find out what these big fish are eating. Find out what the average fish are eating. All you got to do, get a bait remotely the same size as the bait they're eating. Pick your color accordingly. And there's different things you can do. You can actually tweak your baits out to make different colors. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But just so you guys know, when it comes to the super fluke, or it comes to the fluke in general, or any soft plastic jerk bait, each bait does a different thing. Um, when I'm V-waking baits, I'll often favor a smaller fluke. Something in that 2.5 to 3 inch size. Something that's really, really light. In combination with a light wire hook, with light line, you can get that bait out there and slowly V-wake it across the surface. Very, very effective when the fish are schooling, busting, breaking, stuff like that. Um, say I want to run um, something where I'm fishing, you know, either a double rig or even just a standard, you know, regular offset. Um, I'll either run, you know, those fluke juniors or the super fluke. It kind of, it, it depends on what they're eating. Um, I really, really like the Zoom product. I like how on the front of the fluke it's actually scooped down a little bit. That helps keep the bait in the water. Um, there's a lot of baits out there that people make right now that actually have an upturned chain on the baits. Well, if you think about other, other walking baits like as far as hard baits go, that upturned chin catches water and pulls the bait up. It, it creates lift. So with a soft plastic jerk bait, you're going to throw that bait out there. You're going to start twitching it with that upturned chin on the bait. It'll actually come up out of the water and start to porpoise. I mean, it can be good in certain times of the year, but I favor a bait that stays about a foot under the surface. Really, really, really effective. Um, when it comes to color now, like I said, pick your stuff out. You know, make it make it look according. If it's a baby bass color, don't throw a pink worm. Or if they're eating freaking shad, don't throw black. You know, or and there's always exception to the rule with color, but that's the hardest thing to really talk about because you can go out there, one guy can throw a yellow plastic worm next to you, throwing the perfect thing, and he'll outfish you. It happens. It's random. Um, but, you know, there's things you can do to bait. Um, what I like to do is I'll take a bait and I'll actually doctor it up. I'll take, like, a baby bass bait and turn it into, you know, a bluegill or something like that. This is your traditional baby bass fluke right here. Just like that, right there. This, you know, typical limey green, watermelon on the back, pearl belly, black and gold flake. Nothing, nothing too crazy. But with little custom modifications and stuff like that, take some take some dye markers, um, 
basically you'll take uh, markers just like these right here, even some spray, and you'll go ahead and actually doctor the baits up to make them look like different fish. Like this one right here was a combination bluegill baby bass, a little bit of orange under the chin, shark tree's tail, um, blue uh, uh, vertical bars across the side of the bait. Really, really good the other day when I was uh, targeting fish that were schooling up on bluegill. Couple seconds, dot, 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 bingo, you're in the ballpark. You got the, uh, the color that remotely matches the forage. Bingo, you're catching fish. Um, but just keep it simple. There's too many choices out there, and it's often hard for the average angler to get confused. I mean, go back to basics. Watermelons, green pumpkins, and smoke colors. Basically, to recap on what I was using today, um, I'm actually fishing a Dobbins Champion Extreme DX745. It has a lot of power in the bottom end of the rod, a little bit of softness towards the tip. Um, I'm able to work the bait having that softer tip, but when I do get a fish in cover, I have the assurance that the backbone of this rod is going to get the fish out. I can put a lot of pressure on with this rod. Um, as far as the reel goes, like I said, I like a high gear reel, something 7 to 1 or higher. When I do get bit in cover, I want to get that fish out as fast as possible. I don't want them to wrap me up. A high gear reel allows me to do that. Um, also, when I do get bit, if I don't realize it and that fish is swimming right at me, I can pick up line pretty quick and then bury that hook home. As far as line size goes, um, I'm right now, I'm basically, generally all the time, I run 30 pound Power Pro braid, uh, moss green, um, spliced to a 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. I really like Cigar Brazex, very, very strong stuff, highly abrasion resistant line. Um, it's a little thicker than the other stuff. But for the most part, when I'm throwing in the cover, I don't think that the, the, it really matters that much. I'm throwing thick line, heavy stuff, heavy stout tackle. I'm going to get that fish out if I need to. Um, as far as baits go, like I said, you can fish plenty of different baits. I mean, there's so many different types of soft jerk baits on the market. It's pretty much pick your favorite one and go for it. Um, I'm a big fan of the Zoom Super Flukes. Um, that pretty much the whole fluke line. Very, very good baits, good price, um, and a lot of cool color options. As far as hooks goes, that right there is open to interpretation. With the hooks and stuff like that, it kind of depends on what you want to do with the bait. I'm going to throw a smaller, lighter wire hook if I'm V-waking a bait. If I'm throwing heavy cover, heavy line, heavy everything, I'm going to run like a super line of EWG hook. Um, something that has a thicker gauge wire. Something that when I set the hook in cover and start grinding on with a heavy rod, I won't open up the hook, bend it out, whatever. Um, they, they make different styles of EWGs too, so, so pay attention to that. They make a ringed EWG, which is really, really cool. They make the standard stuff. Um, the ringed is really, really cool for the fluke. It allows that bait to do what it wants. Fishing a standard hook with the fluke, there's a little bit of resistance with that first two to three feet of line ahead of your bait. With the ring right there, it eliminates that. The bait's able to move on its own without having the, the weight of the line right there. But pretty much that's it, guys. Just get out here and fish. You know, fish hard. Do what you got to do. The thing about the fluke is, like I said earlier, you got to create the illusion of realism. You got to make that bait look as if it's alive. You do that, you're going to catch more fish, put more in the boat, all that kind of good stuff. As always, thank, we thank you for your business and look forward to helping you guys become better anglers.